Hello everyone, Serge Ellibin here with another Court Arms Gates of Hell Osfront tutorial. So, here we're going to talk about mortars. And we've got all the mortars set up. So, the four German ones here, the two Russian ones, and the four Finnish, including the mine worker. So, I think that's all of them, yep. So, basically, not a lot of new players coming in. You obviously hear the advice of definitely take mortars. And I was a big fan of mortars, not so much recently. But they are very powerful, very effective, but it's good to know, obviously, what each mortar is best, best at. And also what kind of ammunition they bring and what different kinds of variants of ammunitions in each mortar. So we'll quickly go through them. So we've got, first of all, we've got the German, 8cm. You get 30 high explosive and 10 smoke. We'll also go through the ranges of each mortar and the dead zone. So the dead zone is where it can't fire within. So it's minimum range, so it's about 40 it's maximum range is one just shy of 160 i think let's just double check 160 yep yeah. so, so the second one is the 10 centimeter mortar for the germans it has 25 high explosive and 10 smoke ammunition and its dead zone is i think it's 50 no it's 45 and its maximum range is one just shy of 180. next we have the 12 centimeter German mortar, it has 20 high explosive rounds, no smoke, nothing else. So that is a bit of a drawback with it, only high explosive, so it can't be used to support infantry as well as the other two smaller ones. Its dead zone is 50. And its maximum range is 220, I believe. Yes, no, 230. Wow, that might have changed recently. So 230 is the max range, so that's pretty effective. Very long range, very powerful. And then you've also got the heavy mortar, which is the 27 meter Sprigate mortar, which has 15 high explosives and five smoke. And its dead zone is 40, and its maximum range, I think, is about 150, or 160 is. Now, this is a bit different to the other mortars. We will go through the kind of damage the output later, but it's very powerful 200, 200 millimeters, very large round. So the first Russian one is the 82 millimeter mortar, and it comes with 30 high explosive. And 10 smoke and its dead zone is 40 and its maximum range is 160 just around there it's hard to always get the angle then we've got the 120 millimeter russian russian mortar and it comes with 15 high explosive 10 incendiary the only incendiary shells in the game i think is very useful and 10 smoke so a lot better than the german mortar in its inventory it's got more rounds and it's got more varieties so it's more useful as a support weapon its dead zone is 50, <coughs> similar to the German. And its max range is 230, I believe. We'll just double check it. 230, so very long range as well, very powerful. And those incendiaries, very lethal, and I will show them off after. Then we've got the first finished one, which is the 55cm mortar, which is tiny, comes with 45 shells. Its dead zone is 30, and its maximum range, I think it's only about 130, is it? 130, 140? 140, so a little bit short range, but you get a lot of shots and it's very high fire rate, so it's very small. Then you've got the 81 millimeter finish mortar, which is 60 high explosive rounds and 10 smoke rounds, and that's dead zone is 40, and its maximum range is <coughs> 160. Then we've also got, <coughs> we've mixed these up, but we've got the 120 millimeter finish mortar that comes with 40 high explosive rounds. So once again, another one better than the German one, <clears throat> but it's basically a stolen Russian one, I believe, that they just kind of reincorporated. We keep reincorporating themselves like a lot of their equipment stolen Russian. So its dead zone is 50, and its max should be 230, I believe. Yep. And then the strangest one, but also very powerful, the 17 centimeter mine worker, which is a mine thrower from World War One. It has 10 rounds, obviously one loaded in, so it's a big boy. And even though that is a 200mm spigot mortar, look at the size of the shells, it's basically artillery. And its dead zone is 25, and its max range I think is about 150. Yeah, now, this is a different type of beast. So we'll quickly just launch a couple rounds from each one to see what they like. And basically, just the, that was just the basic loadouts of them, and you'll see kind of the fire rates. So the standard mortar, you know, reloads quickly, it's not got much power. But it will kill infantry and light, like kind of light emplacements. It might take a light vehicle if you're lucky. The 10 centimeter, in my opinion, which is the best of the German mortars because you get smoke and high explosive, a decent fire rate, and as you can see, quite a powerful bang. Problem with mortars, though, as you will see, they're not that accurate. They're never going to be as accurate as an anti tank gun or even something like a light infantry gun or a field gun. 
So, like, where you're aiming, it can land anywhere in that area, sometimes even out of it. But they are very effective at kind of, like, bombarding an area. Then we've got the 120cm German one. In my opinion, even though it's the most powerful German mortar, apart from the spigot, least effective because you don't get any smokes. And it does have a large reload time compared to the others. But also, it's very munitions heavy. But it can threaten tanks. Sometimes you'll even find it will knock off tracks if it gets it close enough. So it can be very effective. But this is the one I really like, the spigot mortar. It's down the field engineer line. So I'll just show you the round. They're massively powerful. So let's just chuck one down over here, see if it hits. But the real, the real, um, some of the rounds hits. Look at that. Boom. But it's the smoke rounds, which we're loading now. The smoke rounds are massive. And they do a huge amount of smoke. So let's say you want to smoke out this field gun. But just so you could, troops could cross the street or something. It's not the most accurate, but look at the amount of smoke that comes out of it. That's a huge smoke shell. Bigger than most of the tank smoke shells. So really effective. So out of the German ones, I think the best one is the 10cm. Good multi-roll and good power. Your worst is probably the 120mm, just because it lacks smoke. And I can't use it to spawn infantry. And then you've obviously got the specialty spigot mortar, the 200 milli, if you really want to bring big bang for your buck. But the 12 centimeter, yeah, useful to, for some things, but nowhere near as good as the Russian one or the Finnish one. It's a bit of a letdown, to be fair. So the, for the Russians, both mortars do have more use, as you can see, similar to the German one. One good thing about its smoke, you see that WP, white phosphorus. I'll try and demonstrate this. If it hits, white phosphorus, um, as you'll know, burns very hot. It does produce smoke, but it also produces an incendiary effect. Now, if we do end up hitting some of these trees, maybe. As you can see there, just lit that on fire. So you can use that as like a mini incendiary round. It's not as effective as an incendiary round, but it does work. Careful, when you use it to play on your troops, you can kill your own troops and light your own people on fire with it. So just, just so you know. Then we obviously have the 120mm more. Now it's going to send it there, smoke. There's also white phosphorus, so you've got the mini white phosphorus round there. But the incendiary round is a lot more powerful, and I'll try and demonstrate it here. I'm going to try and get this church if we can. As you can see, it's just lit that building. It is quite effective. So the Russian mortars are definitely a lot better in my opinion. We'll just try and smash this house with a bit, show you the effect of the incendiary. So there you go, quite a big incendiary explosion. Don't think that will catch the church, but as you see, it's already lit several things on fire. Got another one coming in, just over there. And these things can take tanks out as well. So it may not be the most accurate, but it's a very deadly weapon, and it will spread quite quick. Down to the finish one, you've got the 5cm, which very weak in my opinion, but look at the reload speed. Two of these is ridiculous. Now they're not very accurate, <laughs> but they can absolutely demolish a position with rounds like ridiculous amount. They're basically like small grenade rounds, to be fair. And you do get smoke, you don't get any smoke with it, that's the disadvantage. Now the 81cm is basically the Russian mortar, so we've basically gone through that. But his smoke, I believe, is not white phosphorus. So you're a bit safer using that with your troops. We'll quickly go to the 120 mortar. It's basically the Russian mortar, but it has 40 shells. And we'll just obviously kick a few off just so you can see. We'll do a bit close range. Is he still turning? I think he is. <laughs> but you'll see the explosion, maybe. I don't know where that shell went, to be fair. He's kind of firing off to the side of it. Oh, he's firing the other way. <laughs> okay, but you saw the explosion of the shell. It is quite powerful. But the Finn's real standout is the mine worth it. So, oh that fires are still spreading, that's quite impressive. The mine worth it, even though it hasn't got the best range for a powerful weapon, so you, you, know, you can't actually hit the church from here, but if you target there, you'll see the explosive damage of it. Look at that. Fires over. Boom. That thing is deadly strong. Now we will try and hit a tank with it. We'll try. Just to show you how effective it can be against armour. Now the short range isn't great, but if you get them into a decent position where they're outside, it can be a very effective attack tool as well as defense. And I, when I, I haven't played, played as the Finns much, but I find that the Mine Worth it is probably my favorite of all the kind of mortal weapons in the game. It's definitely the most effective. 170 millimeters of pure death. Will it hit the tank? Close enough. But even there, you, you kill a lot of infantry and stuff around it. Did it blow the tracks off? No, it didn't. But it's quite a powerful weapon. So yeah, just a little quick guide to mortars and basically what they've got inside them, what inventory, and the kind of the uses of each one. Like you say, your tactical ones are with your smoke and your high X. The best mortar out of all of them is definitely the 120mm uh, Russian one, because high X incendiary and smoke. But definitely keep your eyes out for the spigot mortar, the 20cm, which was actually used to 
to um, clear obstacles, I believe, by the Germans. It was like an engineer's weapon. And obviously keep your eyes out for the mine worth it. Because it is pretty amazing. One more shot, see if we can just ding that tank. As you can see, if it hits, it penetrates anyway. It's a very powerful round. Come on. Ah, no way near, but as you can see, the damage is ridiculous. That comes off it. I wonder if that de does it take the tracks out? No, unfortunately not. Anyway, I hope you liked the video. Like, subscribe, and leave a comment if you did. And I'll see you on the next one. Hope you have a great day.